Hello, I am Ardhendu De and you are watching ADC's Literature. Today, we are discussing the nature of William Shakespeare's comedies. We will try to locate the key features of Shakespearean comedies and carry out a critical overview of the whole concept. The term comedy originally meant merely a play with a happy ending, as distinct from a tragedy with its unhappy ending. The modern definition of comedy is more biased towards laughter, and this can cause some confusion when a student first turns to comedy or a Shakespearean comedy particularly, they will find it difficult that where the comedy is. Shakespearean comedies are funny and they make audience laughter, but they do not only do that. Remember that they can have very serious elements in their themes and plot and often concern themselves in greater modulation with some of the weaker aspects of human nature. This explanation is possibly only necessary for those brought up on a diet of film television comedy with maniac laughter just uh, uh, injected from a CD or a cassette and it is often in social media surfacing every few seconds on the uh, on that soundtrack and comedy taken to mean that at no time uh, must anything serious take place or be mentioned to the audience unless it is to be instantly deflated or mocked. Good comedy has always had a serious demand for laughter, but this circus clown is a felon, but also of a pathetic figure, someone for whom things never go right and someone for whom life is manually out of control. Much humor derives from potentially serious situations where people uh, demean themselves or make themselves look ridiculous. The man whose trousers fall down in public or the person who slips on a banana skin are classic examples. Many successful films or television serials have a comic nature and have been based on situations of disparate seriousness. The British series, for example, Steptoe and Son, had at its heart an old man unscrupulously hanging on to his son and refusing to let him leave home or have a life independent of his father. Again, Tarek Mehta Ka Ultra Chasma is running very successfully on Indian televisions. This is all about variegated cultural entities of India. So it is very serious. The story revolves around a well-settled society, namely Gokuldam society, which focuses on the Mehta family. All the members of this society are from different states, cultures, and are unique in their way and in their way of presentation. Again, in Shakespeare's best known comic character is obscenely fat, robber, liar, braggart, cheat, disused, drunk, and totally without moral scruple or any feeling except selfishness. So they are a kind of social variety. So it represents a cosmopolitan of society. Thus, comedy is not merely laughter. In practice, all good comedy has had a marked vein of seriousness in it, and Shakespearean comedies fit this pattern exactly. They represent a variegated pattern or variegated social emblem. Just as there are generally held to be four great tragedies, so Shakespeare's comic output is dominated by four plays. Club Night, As You Like It, A Midsummer Night's Dream, 
and much ado about nothing. Each play is different, but each has a number of shared features. Each concentrates on a small section of a specific society, usually the ruling or upper classes of a named country. Iliara, now Russia, in Twelfth Night, France in As You Like It, Thebes, Central Greece in A Midsummer's Night's Dream, and Messina, a port city on the island of Sicily, in much ado about nothing. The leading characters are frequently misguided or at fault in some way, but by means of a love affair of one sort or another, they are allowed to find their way out of their weaknesses happy and with no major ill effects. However, not all the characters are allowed to escape in this manner. There is usually a character in the play who is left outside the magic circle of lovers at the end of the play. Someone who is unable to change, learn, or be redeemed, and who, as a result, cannot achieve final and lasting happiness based on self-knowledge and a and a uh, true knowledge of the world he cannot get. Orsino in Twelfth Night is not really in love, but merely forcing himself into a belief that. He is for his own selfish purposes, but he is allowed to find and marry the right person, Bhala, despite his mistake. Malvolio, on the other hand, is too stiffed in vanity and self-deception to be brought to his senses and ends the play saint, unredeemed and ruined. The happiness of the other characters at the end of the comedy is given favor and sharpness by the realization brought on by characters such as Malvolio that brings to not always end happy. The audience is made to value happiness by being given a taste of unhappiness. The key to the thematic content of the comedies is self-knowledge. The characters frequently have a false image of themselves and as a result fail totally to see the truth behind other people's characters. It would need only a slight twist of a plot for most of Shakespearean comedies to turn into tragedy. The heroine dies at the altar after having been falsely accused of unfaithfulness by her fear. At least this is what for a moment appears to have happened in much ado about nothing. However, the atmosphere of a comedy is manipulated so that whilst violent or gloomy events stimulate the audience, uh, they never really feel that an unhappy ending is possible or likely. This is a sort of trick that sounds easy when written down in a work of criticism, but when which is uh, which in practice require a most delicate lancing act from the author. The happiness at the end of a comedy is worthless and empty unless it can be shown that misery and unhappiness would really have come about. Enough harshness has to be injected into the play to give it this film to make it incredible few audiences believe in worlds where only good things happen, however much they might want to and to provide narrative tension and suspense. But if the mixture becomes too strong, the comedy will be sour and the audience will hang awkwardly between two opposite directions. To opposite emotions. To an extent, this is what happens in the latter problem comedies, where the action seems to be tragic but the ending is happy. The two elements are never 
reconciled. The same principle in reverse can be applied to the tragedy. The violent and tragic action is relieved by a measure of folly, but never thought to deflect the play from its main purposes. Just as a somber element in a comedy can highlight and emphasize the comedy, so a comic element in a tragedy, uh, uh, such as Pool in King Lear, makes the tragedy richer and more strongly felt. Discussion about the serious elements in the comedies can tend to obscure the basic fact about them that they are very funny. Their humor takes many forms. The pool or the clown parts in the comedies tend to be uh, of two distinct types. There is the low comedy of the characters such as Tastan in As You Like It and Bottom in A Mid Midsummer Night's Dream. These characters are lower class, often words and crude, but sometimes also skilled with words. They are verbal wit. At the other extreme stand, Jax in As You Like It and Fest in Twelfth Night, whose fooling is tinged with melancholy and bitterness, and who are altogether more intellectual and refined than the Tastar and Bottom and other lower characters. Wordplay and punning is an essential source of humor. For example, in uh, convoluted uh, speeches of Dogberry in much ado about nothing, an arch exponent of malaprovision, or the use of words in wholly unsuitable contexts. Disguise is both a theme and a source of humor. The most obvious form of disguise is the dressing up of female characters in male play. As with Voila in Twelfth Night or Rosalind and Celia in uh, Rosalind particularly in As You Like It. A disguise of this nature allows for multiple ideas and it is useful to remember that all female roles in Shakespeare's plays were played by boys. So disguise in another form is seen in the use of Ivasco one of the funniest sequence or a kind of a um, situation in Shakespeare is the uh, orchard scene in Club Night in which the steward Malvolio unwittingly unburdens himself of all his private thoughts of love in the sight of his arch enemies. Ivas dropping is also a significant feature in much at about nothing and in the method by which the lovers are brought together. Of course, love is a major topic in the comedies and every comedy has at least one love story at its center. Love is not merely a method of arriving at a plot. Love signifies a unity and accord between man and woman and the lovers can be made to represent universe in miniature. A universe in which harmony, peace, and fruitful union have been achieved. The lovers in the comedies frequently start, uh, frequently start their journey uh, either misunderstanding themselves and other people, or under threat from the world as blood. The triumph of their love and the multiple marriage that usually end a comedy are symbolic as well as practical, showing how individuals can win through trouble and hardship to reach happiness and fulfillment. One of the aims of the comedies is to show people harmoniously with one another in society, which is why the comedies operate in good characters, whereas the tragedies are dominated by single characters. The tragedies end the tragedy is end with peace having been achieved through death and partition. Comedy is end with peace having been achieved through people coming to terms with their own nature and that of other people. The comedies are funny 
but also searching in their analysis of human behavior. In addition to plays already mentioned, the merchant of Venice is known as a comic, although only in the sense of having a partially happy. Its essentially serious concern is the conflict between the Jew Silok and the commercial and uh, social leaders of Venice. It does, however, have a courageous hero in Portia who fights for a lover in a man's world and wins. So, the world of Shakespearean comedies is so variegated, so beautiful, and so enticing and so enchanted that we as a student, we as a readers, can have the access of Shakespearean comedies with a great plethora of knowledge, and that knowledge can be shared by further reading and further reading with collaborated ideologies and ideals that we can find out. A comedy tells of life simply. The life, how a author should represent his life, how the author should represent the mirth of life is the very style of his own and Shakespeare has excelled in his own excellency by representing the world of Elizabeth through his comedies. And the comedy is Nothing sort of encircled only by laughter, but its broader view is the part of life. The life itself, the saga of life, has been represented to Shakespearean comedy. So, I invite you to read the Shakespearean comedies further in your course of studies. And if you find any difficulty in understanding, you can ask me here. I will try my best to give some answers. Like, share, comment, and obviously subscribe to.